There are two ways to remove a plaster. Slow agony as each hair gets dragged out of your tender skin. Or you can rip it clean off and be done with it. I should have been a doctor. Any stay of execution for Liz Truss just prolongs the agony and allows the wound to get worse. The scale of Liz Truss's unpopularity has reached epic proportions. With the latest polls suggesting the British public would now rather have a coalition of chaos led by a divided Labour Party and the SNP. I backed Liz Truss's economic plan, which was a failure of political strategy, sequencing and communication, but not a failure of policy. But that ship has passed and with it, Liz Truss's entire purpose. Let's be honest, we're not keeping her for her oratory skills, her sure-footed leadership or her political nous. Comparisons to Margaret Thatcher are now a joke. If we're looking for a figure from the 80s to compare her to, she's more Michael Foote than the Iron Lady. Do you think Margaret Thatcher would have shied away from speaking in the Commons yesterday? Would she have allowed her ministers to say the prime minister is in charge, that she deserves a chance, that she's not hiding under a desk? Thatcher would be on the desk, giving it both barrels, leading from the front, taking down her critics and dealing with the situation. Now, I don't want to be unkind because it's been a horrific few weeks for Liz Truss, and she's a decent person who has been to hell and back. It must be awful, but don't sign up to be prime minister if you're not prepared to or can't handle a crisis. I reiterate, her policies have been right and history will judge these U-turns harshly as Britain sinks into recession and signs up for years of weak growth. But I believe that not only is Liz Truss now the emperor with no clothes, she's certainly got no policies, I also believe that personally she's not in a good place either. She looks broken. There are rumours she was in tears before she showed her face in the Commons. Understandable given what she's been through, and I don't judge her. But her feeble performance at Friday's press conference, which featured more oohs, ums and ahs than an Elton John concert, is when I checked out. Check this out. I'll now take questions. Um, uh, um. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Sorry seems to be the hardest word. And her interview last night with the BBC's excellent Chris Mason did nothing to restore confidence or demonstrate that she can reboot her premiership. And what I now want to do is go on and deliver for the public. We were elected on the 2019 manifesto. I'm determined to deliver on that. Levelling up, securing investment into all parts of our country, getting roads built, getting opportunities right across the nation. And that's what I'm thinking about and that's what I'm focused on. I'm concerned she's now in total personal meltdown. She needs to see her GP, not her MPs. I wish her well. So can she cling on? Unlikely. One of the best connected political journalists in the country, Christopher Hope, who will be joining us later in the hour, tweeted the following yesterday. Three devastating words. It is over. Ouch. I would personally urge the Prime Minister to resign in the morning so that she doesn't face the abject horror show of Prime Minister's questions, which can only further damage the credibility of this government. Forget about Keir Starmer asking questions of Liz Truss. She must now ask questions of herself. Liz the Builder. Can she fix it? Liz the Builder. No, she can't. Put bluntly, it's not happening. She's a busted flush. The fuel tank is empty. The gun is out of ammo. The party's over. The fat lady isn't just singing. She's in a cab on her way home. Taxi for Liz Truss.